As a medical issue, coughing is one of the most prevalent that people experience. Cough is also common in veterinary care as it has a major impact on the assessment of the pet's quality of life by its owners. In both human and veterinary medicine, treatment of persistent cough is often ineffectual or futile. One of the options for medical therapy is the use of expectorants. Although some studies claim that expectorants do not reduce mucus production, rather they do boost bronchial secretion output and improve bronchial exudate clearance. Here, we'll discuss the two types or classification of them, namely the ingested expectorant and the inhalant expectorant. Inhalant expectorant Unlike pills or serum form, Inhalant expectorants are substances that are inhaled via the nose, through sniffing, or mouth as gases or fumes. As a result of the rapid absorption into circulation, they provide an instant euphoric effect. Although less addictive than many other drugs, it is very harmful and results in a wide range of major problems for the user. Despite the fact that the procedures are time-consuming, they are very useful as a treatment for chronic respiratory illnesses when combined with adequate physiotherapy to assist. Examples include wood tars, eucalyptus oil, and benzoin. Ingested expectorant. Ingest implies to swallow or absorb. Hence, expectorants of this sort must be taken orally while others are absorbed from the stomach and expelled through the bronchial mucosa. Under ingested expectorants, we have squeal and ipakakinha, which are reflex or nuisance that have certain and unique properties such as emetic alkaloid, emetine, and cardiotonic. Triosa-derived guaiacal derivatives like guaiofenosin are typical stimulant expectorants found in cough syrups and lozenges. With so many expectorants on the market, liquids, peels, regulars, and even combo options, following your healthcare provider's advice is important. So what is mucolytics? Mucolytic drugs are part of a class of pharmaceuticals known as mucoactive agents. It has an effect on the mucus layer that lines the respiratory tract, allowing it to clear faster. This class of drugs includes a variety of medications that function in different ways and are used for various purposes. However, they are commonly recommended for a similar purpose, that is, thinning excess mucus so that it may be expelled from the lungs. On the other hand, some eucalyptics may have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects, while others have additional expectorant or anti-twisive actions. There are three common examples of mucolytics. First, the dambrexine. Dambrexine is used to treat horses and has an effect on the secretory activity of cellular glandular cells in the respiratory mucosae. The second is the acetylcysteine. Acetaminophen toxicity in cats is treated with acetylcysteine as an injectable antidote. The third one is the bromhexine. Bromhexine helps to liquefy mucus and enhance its flow properties by increasing its volume while lowering its viscidity. It comes as a solution or a powder and it can be used alone or in combination with antibacterial agents. Aside from this, there are two types of mucolytics, can either be classic or peptide. Classic mucolytics breaks down the mucin network that initially forms the mucus layer. Classic mucolytics makes sputum easier to evacuate from the airways by breaking down the components that keep mucus together. Classic mucolytics include acetylcysteine, carbocysteine, erdocysteine, and feudocysteine.
On the other hand, peptide mucolytics are uninfected by the mucin network in the mucus layer. Instead, they go for the protein and DNA connections that are common in PAS. Peptide mucolytics include tornase, alpha, and thymusine beta-4. Mucolytics Mechanism of Action Mucolytics remove heavy mucus and are commonly used to treat respiratory problems. They do this by breaking down the chemical bonds between molecules in the mucus. Mucolytics serve to prevent or eliminate mucus plugs that cause atelectasis, which, if left untreated, can develop to bronchiectasis. In addition to the topic, mucolytics has a minor irritant impact on the respiratory system, but it is otherwise harmless and effective at liquefying mucopurulent materials quickly. Mucolytic drug improves lysosomal function and that lysosomal enzymes hydrolyze the mucopolysaccharide fibers of mucos. and today I will be talking about decongestants. So what are decongestants? Well, decongestants are drugs that can help shrink swollen tissues in the nose, sinuses, throat, and space behind the eardrop or the middle ear. They can be taken orally as a pill or used as nose drops, sprays, and even gels. So this can help relieve pressure, pain, and stuffiness or congestion. Now, let's talk about the two main categories of decongestants. First one are the H1 antagonists. H1 antagonists are used in nasal tract allergies and viral rhinitis. Example of H1 antagonists are cetirizine, levosipirazine, dysloratidine, loratidine, and fexofenamine. Moving on to the second category of decongestants is sympathomimetic drugs such as pseudoephedrine and phenylephrine. So pseudoephedrine are used in treating rhinitis and nasal congestion. This drug works by causing vasoconstriction of respiratory tract because of side effects of pseudoephedrine are very common such as nervousness, weakness, palpitation, insomnia, and possible congestion once you stop using it. However, this drug today are not available over the counter because it is a key ingredient in making meth. So these days, they are using phenylephrine to limit the usage of pseudoephedrine. Other examples of decongestants are xylometazoline and oxymetazoline. Adhesives are often known as cough suppressants. These are drugs that are used to alleviate coughing and are commonly used to treat allergies, respiratory diseases, and infections that are commonly caused by viruses. Antitussives alleviate the frequency of coughing, especially if it is painful, distressing, exhausting, and most likely to exacerbate or even cause lung damage. They act by interfering the cough reflex either at the level of the sensory endings in the upper respiratory tract or at the level of the central nervous system. They should not be used when respiratory secretions are copious unless coughing is excessive and causing exhaustion. However, this state is uncommon in animals. A strong antitussive should not be used with an expectorant because increased fluid needs to be removed by coughing, but an antitussive will reduce cough. Direct acting antitussives. First in the line is the peripherally acting antitussives. So what are these peripherally acting antitussives? This antitussive suppresses the cough reflex by decreasing the input of stimuli from cough receptors in respiratory passages. So they either work by anesthetizing the local nerve ending or acting as demulsants. Speaking of demulsants, what are demulsants? So demulsants are sweet, syrupy vehicles in which other cough remedies are dissolved such as honey and syrup. So demulsants coat, protects, and soothes inflamed mucosae for a brief period. Example of demulsants are benzonotate. Okay, benzonotate is an agent that depresses the afferent sensors of the cough reflex and pulmonary stretch receptors. 
Local anesthetics can also be used to control severe cough. Other examples include camphor, menthol, eucalyptus oil, and levodropamazine. Centrally acting antitussive act within the central nervous system to suppress the central cough pathway and they comprise the majority of the currently used antitussives. Cough center is near the respiratory center in the medulla oblongata. Antitussives have been demonstrated to block certain neurons that are involved in cough coordination. Codeine is a naturally occurring alkaloid and it has been the major antitussive. It shares many other actions of morphine at a less potent level. Example, it is analgesic and constipant. Codeine is well absorbed from the gut and it owes its satisfactory duration of action to its lower metabolism. Codeine does not cause respiratory depressions as does morphine. Morphine and dimorphine can be used as cough suppressants. Their use is restricted to the control of severe cough in terminal stages. This is a centrally acting opioid cough depressant that causes little sedation as compared to stronger opioid drugs. Hydrocodone is a narcotic drug that is used as an antitussive, in which sedation is common and long-term administration results to constipation with an overdose of hydrocodone will result in respiratory and cardiovascular depression. Falcodine is about twice as potent as codeine, nosacapine and dextromethorphan are about equipotent, and dextrorphan is about half as potent. Oral root is a conventional root for cough remedies. These agents may be given parenterally. Benji. Only on Netflix March 16th.